87% of Michigan voters believe revitalizing Detroit is important to the state's overall economy. Uh, this, in the light of the legislature right across the street from our AT&T studio, trying to figure out whether to send hundreds of millions of dollars into Detroit. Doug Rothwell is on the other end of our line, the CEO of Business Leaders for Michigan. Thanks for being available this morning. Good morning, Michael Patrick. Um, I always thought there was a schism between the city of Detroit and the rest of the state, places like Grand Rapids, that there was a uh, maybe not a, a rivalry or a disdain or that sort of thing, but 87% is, uh, oh God, my gosh, that's a mandate, isn't it? I, I do. I think it is. And I, I think what we've seen is, you know, that what happened in the last decade when we went through that uh, economic uh, depression, really, that uh, we experienced, I think it brought our state together. And I think we all realized that no one was coming from outside to our rescue. We had to fix uh, our own problems. And I think this poll is another indication of that. And especially the, the numbers where you see that there is a, a two-thirds majority statewide and no place in the state less than 50% support for uh, the state making a financial contribution to the financial restructuring plan. I, I think it's really remarkable. Business Leaders for Michigan is the state's business roundtable dedicated to making Michigan a top 10 state for jobs, personal income, and a healthy economy with economic growth. You can go to michigan-turnaroundplan.com. You can't turn the state around without turning Detroit around, can you, or can you? I don't think you can. I, let's put it this way, Michael Patrick. You're not going to achieve what you could achieve if Detroit was really kind of performing at its uh, full value. And, and, again, I think that's what the Michigan voters are saying in this poll. They get that. They get that it's our largest city. And really outside the state, it's the image of Michigan. And it's why it's so important that this kind of uh, fragile recovery that's happening right now in the city with the redevelopment downtown, midtown, some of the neighborhoods, you know, if, if the city doesn't get out of bankruptcy on time, that's going to be a cloud over its head and, you know, could jeopardize some future investment that's made into the city. So that, that's why I think our organization in particular feels so strongly that we have got to get this resolved on schedule. And it's why it's important right now that the state legislature uh, support the proposal that's been put forward by emergency manager or you have uh, on behalf of the business leaders from michigan have sent a letter to the legislature what did you write we basically said just that we said we think that it's a historic opportunity uh, that will get international attention if detroit comes through the largest municipal bankruptcy in history on schedule and in a position where it can have a balanced budget that provides more money to improve services and rebuild its population that's a story that will help the entire state of michigan because again detroit is our image maker and there does need to be financial oversight in place of uh, this plan for some period of time and that's part of the proposal that's been made but we also urge that we not have a lot of additional uh, provisions or strings kind of tied to the money simply because the negotiations are so complicated that uh, that may put uh, the state in a position where it's unable to get the agreement of all the other parties that need to be at the table. Right now, there's an agreement on the table. It's a pretty darn good one, and we'd urge that we get it over the finish line. We had a couple of state legislators in here yesterday, Republicans, and they shifted in their seats and winced a little bit at the idea of uh, that Detroit bailout and sending those hundreds of millions of dollars. Which of the legislature's concerns are the most valid in your eyes? Well, I think certainly financial oversight. I mean, they want to make sure that if they do this, that uh, it's not going to kind of go back into the bad old habits of the past a year or two later. And uh, we all agree with that. And it, I think that the uh, structure that's been put in place very much looks like what New York City uh, went through uh, for, and actually is still going through, the financial review board that's still in place in New York uh, 30, 40 years after its uh, uh, you know, near bankruptcy experience, something like that does make a lot of sense here for Detroit. I, I understand there's also concerns, on the other hand, by Detroiters that, you know, worry, well, is that going to, you know, result in a lot of, you know, state oversight with us forever? But, you know, I guess on balance, we would say that the proposal that's been made is a pretty fair one. Uh, and uh, the, the worst situation would be that this just drags out and, uh, you know, just creates an image problem for our whole state. This morning, the news that the jobless rate has ticked down to 7.4%. Now, that's only from 7.5%, but over the course of a year, April to April, uh, we're down 1.6%, the jobless rate. Is that significant? Yeah, I mean, it's eight steady months of improvement, Michael Patrick. I think it's yet another indicator of 
the turnaround that's been going on in Michigan now for the last few years, we'd all like to see that rate be even lower. And I think it will get lower. If you look at the surveys that we do of our members, which are the largest companies in the state, they're much more optimistic about Michigan's future than America's economic future. And that bodes well for you know, future unemployment rate drops because these are the people that are going to be making investment decisions. And as they continue to invest in Michigan, we're going to see more jobs created. So, again, we're, we're pretty bullish uh, on the future of our state here, at least in the, in the near future. 